Hey, I'm Monica Rea. Welcome to my channel. And today we're going to be talking about how I made this, which is a 1950s inspired house coat, which generally women, it was worn by women and men, but generally women would wear this either at night when they're getting ready to go to bed or in the morning when they wake up, they would put on the house coat while they're preparing themselves for the day or you could go down and have breakfast in it, or if you're doing any leisure or leisure type of activities around the house that are informal, you would wear the house coat. So I am going to be using two different patterns for it. I'll show you here. All right, so I'm using the Simplicity 8513 and taking those beautiful bell sleeves and slapping those on this 8648 in view B. Here we have the, this is view B here. Um, either one doesn't matter, it's the same thing. So what we're gonna do is grab pattern pieces one and two and four and five and seven and eight. From the 8513, we're taking just the sleeves, so that will be just pattern piece number 12. All right, so as we're cutting out these pieces, I realized that I bought this pattern in the wrong size. It, this is in size 6 to size 14 and generally in patterns I'm a size 18 on average so yeah I got to do a fun crash course in pattern drafting but yeah so quick story time uh, my sister and I were perusing the aisles at Hobby Lobby and stumbled across a pattern sale and the patterns were like 99 cents each and I just like got all excited and just started grabbing patterns and it was like more of an afterthought when I was like oh yeah check the sizes but you know I think the first couple that I grabbed I didn't check it I didn't like go through because I was just too excited I had all these ideas but yeah I pretty much um, redrafted each piece This is the fabric of choice. It is a beautiful, lightweight cotton wall. It's 100% cotton. It was digitally printed in Spain and I absolutely love it. It's very billowy and just it's super soft and amazing. And voila, here is all of our pattern pieces. Pressing is super important. It helps keep everything nice and smooth and your seams are very nice and it's just an overall professional look. These are the threads that I'll be using. And stay stitching is very important. Um, pretty much what it does is help the overall longevity of a garment. It keeps things nice and flat and taut and it kind of reinforces the seams. And here I'm doing gathering stitches, which is just a double row of straight stitches.
and here I'm just making sure that they're gathered the same length. I'm pinning the bodice front and the bodice back at the shoulders and side seams. And yes, I pinned it wrong sides together because I am doing French seams. Wall or other lightweight fabrics are perfect for French seams and I happen to be a huge fan. So one of the steps when doing the fringe seams, you want to trim off the excess seam allowance like this. That way you fold it over and then just sew right along that line there. completed French scenes. For the waistband or belt, I'm just going to sew them together at the sides. And then I'm pinning the belt to the outside of the bodice. So here I'm just sewing the belt or waistband onto the bodice. The belt is going to be two layers, as you can see here. You just sew it along here and then it'll fold down and close really nicely and it'll enclose the skirt once we get to it. And here's the bodice so far with the belt attached. All right, and now on to the skirt. I French seam down the center back. Now the whole skirt's done. French seams and all. So for this part to fully finish it, I need to hand sew along the inside. Here, it's all done, hand sewn across. And I added these little tabs or extensions to the waistband cause you know, my measurements were a little off and I wanted it, well, I wanted it to be like loose, but fitted. Here is what it's looking like so far with the skirt attached. So something that I've learned when sewing is to hem up or pretty much finish the, the cuffs of the sleeve first if it's simple like that and then sew the sleeves together 
it finishes much nicer in my opinion. So here's the sleeves all finished and attached to the bodice. And here I just did a little overcasting stitch with the sewing machine. I was trying to decide either having the lace show all the way or be tucked under slightly. And this, I'm sewing on the lace, but this is not the best practice. I'm literally just holding it and sewing it. Generally, you would want to pin it first and then sew it. So here's the hem all finished and she's looking good so far. These are some buttons that I've got from my great grandmother and grandmother. So these buttons are like 80 plus years old and like what better way to use them. Here's the buttons all sewn on and I added some hook and bar closures for a better fit. Okay, so that's it. Thank you guys for joining me um, during this process of making the 1950s inspired house coat. I hope I inspired you guys to either make a house coat or possibly dabble in mixing and matching pattern pieces because trust me, it really helps you to understand how pattern pieces work together with the body. It's like really fascinating and at least for me, um, taking bits and pieces of different patterns kind of helps me understand, you know, with all the different like, say, sleeve shapes and how they fit and accounting for like ease and all of these things. So I really, really recommend playing around with patterns and just having fun and create something, you know. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe because I do have a lot more fun projects coming in the near future. So thank you, thank you so much.